from Hollywood, California. I don't want to be broke no more. Meltdown Comics, Nerd Melt Theater, Harmon Town. Now it's that. Please welcome to the stage the mayor of Harmon Town, Mr. Dan Harmon. Hi. Hi, how are you? Let's get down to business. How you doing, Dan? I'm good. Sorry I brought the energy down with my hello. A, I, don't, I don't know why I did that. I think what you've created is a, uh, a pregnant pause. Pregnant with possibility. Oh. Impregnated by pos- possibility. Pregnant with potential. <laughs> now you brought the mood down. <laughs> All right, Jeff, let's run through my notes. L- <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hey, okay, so are there any British people in the audience? All right. Wow. <laughs> well, but, 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 so, do, what, what is with the word aluminum? Like, 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 like. Because yeah. so, we, sp- we, it's, it's spell, it's, uh, did we discover it and then they heard about it but didn't see how it was spelled? I think, I think they think they discovered it because, because uh, uh, Kate, my Scottish ex girlfriend, she, uh, she was, Emphatic about aluminium, and uh, aluminium. wouldn't hear otherwise. There's a there's an I that's not there. Yeah, that, it's not like nuclear where we say it wrong. You know, I would I would definitely just assume yeah. that you know we're we're Americans and whoa we do everything wrong, but they're wrong about this. <laughs> aluminium, not knock it off. All right. Uh, hey, do you think dogs know how to share with each other? No. Okay, all right. I think, I, I think dogs are a pack mentality. There's alpha, beta, and so on, and so uh, the, the, the beta will always defer to the alpha of any group. Right, and yeah. so when there's owners there, because we have these sticks, these like pepperoni sticks that the dogs really like. I mean, they love them, but Harvey, the big one, he, he, eats, he tries to eat them slow, and you can see him watching Nigel, the little tiny one, and like... Nigel just puts it between his paws and does that little thing where he's just like nibbling at the end and he just loves licking and nibbling it with his little needle teeth. And uh, and Harvey just sits across the room and watches him while he like chomps it like, like a candy bar. It's like gone in three bites, but he wishes it wasn't and he just stares at Nigel. And then he starts doing laps, but he's like, he's got one eye on Nigel and one eye on me all the time. Like, like, because I think that means that he know. If I could, I think if I walked out of the room, he'd steal the other dogs. Yeah. Uh, thing. Well, I mean, like, look at uh, runts of the litter. Like, there's the the, the, the the puppies won't share the teats. So one one puppy is going to be the you know yeah the, get no milk and be a little runt. Right, but dogs have to get socialized into the the rule. I mean, I, yeah, the, the puppies certainly they don't share. Of course, they're like little blind larvae that are just looking for. <laughs> they don't even. They probably don't even know they're not sharing. They probably think they are. <laughs> the, the the mothers. Just I guess I disagree with you yeah. about about pie. <laughs> as we found out. I, but the the mothers don't even like like try to distribute it evenly. They just like they just lay there and say, "Fucking first come, first serve, baby." <laughs> Yeah, what, what do you, do? Do adult do, do the mother dogs? Do they go like, all right, come on, this guy no, didn't they, get they, as much. They lay there and just go, Jesus Christ, I got seventeen people sucking on my tits right now. <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel, Dan? <laughs> do you th- do you think that feels good? Because I just thought that would I, I feel good it, when you said th- that. I was like, well, that would feel seven know, time, I, te- seventeen times as good as. <laughs> As when you get a little nipple play. Yeah. My nipples are extremely sensitive. I don't like a whole lot of nipple play. Yeah, we've been over this. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you said you don't like, you're not a nipple guy. I'm not, I'm like, not, I, just oh. don't, I, just don't, I just don't need a whole lot of it. Yeah, well, nobody, that, that's the beauty of nipples. It's like, that's the point. I mean, I mean, I don't really need any of it. All right. <laughs> oh, we're back to, back to alienation. Okay. I thought, I thought maybe there was a misunderstanding. I'm like, no, 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 you know they're, they're supposed to be sensitive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I, I that's, think, that's the selling point. I think, mine are more, I think mine are more sensitive than people that enjoy it because it's like, hey, it's, like it's, it's, it's really, like, it's a lot. It's an overload. All right. Uh, uh, so, uh, 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 pop, pop culture corner. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know what that other stuff was. <laughs> Sometimes this is I 
money's made out of things that aren't art or uh, education or war. We call them pop culture. Uh, where'd you get that song? <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a, it's our friend Kevin McLeod who gave oh. us a, a family song. Oh. <laughs> From the clan McLeod. Um, yes. Holy ground. Um, I'm choosing right. for some ass. <clears throat> I, I got something to say. It's better to burn out than fade away. <laughs> it's Highlander. Uh, okay, so there's a hot hamburglar. <laughs> That's it. It's been it's been in the news for ages. If you oh, yeah, don't know, you're 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 not hip. There's the re- a hot the, hamburger. Yeah, the, 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 they, they got Jake Jake Gyllenhaal playing the hamburger now. <laughs> yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> I mean, hey, did you see? Have you seen that movie Nightcrawler? Uh, Is that Jake time. Gyllenhaal? Yeah. Okay, good. I can't, I always get him confused with the other guy. Who's the other guy? Uh, Martin Luther King. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I'm sure they, they're they sick of seeing each other in casting sessions, those guys. <laughs> Ugh, I have a nightmare <laughs> that Jake's out for this part, too. That was my Martin Luther King impression. <laughs> mm, I'd like some toast. <laughs> it's a very sensitive, very yeah. cautious Martin Luther King impression. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Do you know the way to the library so I can continue to be a very smart person? My name's Martin Luther King. I was murdered. Oh, my God, a ghost! A ghost! Yeah, I'm, I'm here. It's me. I'm a ghost. Uh, uh, boo! <laughs> I don't know what I don't know. I'm on a weird. Well, uh, are you, are you, is it I mean, you or is it me tonight? Doctor Dr. Dr. King, uh, what do you? Uh, what's your favorite thing to go haunting now that uh, you're a ghost? Well, uh, you know, as you know, <laughs> like I don't want to do the whole dream thing, like Freddy Krueger. You know, like you know, every time you have a dream and then I'm there and it's like this is my dream because I feel like. Fun's fun, but it undercuts my larger message. <laughs> I don't want to turn turn the importance of my life into a bit in death, even though I will be dead far longer than I was alive, and that is something you should be warned about. <laughs> it's going to get boring. Enjoy it, and stop being racist. I don't know how many times I have to say it. <laughs> it's a waste of your life. Is there racism in the afterlife? There are racist ghosts. There are people who, who died racist. <laughs> and, and so they're, they can't get not racist. They're just walking around going, look at all these black people. And they're upset. And it's, that's what they deserve. Because they can't do anything about it. You can't segregate with, with, if, with non-corporeal hands. You can't you can't separate people when your when your body is a vapor. They deserve it, and I'm not a I've never I was not famous for being a judgmental person in my life, but I think they deserve it. I when when I when I died, I had t- I had two immediate thoughts. One was like, wh- wh- why the fuck am I not in heaven? This is insane. Why am I why am I a ghost? Me. And then my second thought was like, oh, so if you're a ghost, you, you, it's neither heaven nor hell. That's purgatory kind of style, or what? Like, is that, is that the deal? Well, I, I'm, I, I, I ain't seen no uh, harps. <laughs> I ain't seen no harps. Someone just repeated it in the audience. I don't. Um, anyways, it's. I look. I was never gonna make an exciting ghost. That's the fact. <laughs> Uh, who, who's your, who, who's your, who, what's your, who's your role model ghost? Who's your favorite most entertaining? I'm glad ghost? you asked. Come on out, come on out, Napoleon. Ah, oh, sacré bleu, sacré bleu, sacré bleu, sacré bleu, sacré bleu. I didn't think of it the first time. <laughs> I said blue, and then I and I was like, oh fuck, boo, boo, sacré bleu. Wait, so, so Napoleon, wait, hang on. You just keep, you just came up with sacré bleu just now in front of us. Yeah, yeah, we we. I'm, I'm constantly uh, inventing and experimenting. You've been dead for like almost 200 years. We. Oui. 
There's a thousand things to do when you die. You float around, you look at the people. Sacre boo! I just now got to LA. I never knew about it. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Napoleon ghost. <coughs> uh, oh. Napoleon, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I, I got g- ghost pneumonia. But you, you can't die from ghost pneumonia, can you? No, that's why it's so bad. You just keep coughing. You can't get rid of it. There's no ghost medicine. Why do I sound like Cheech Marin? <laughs> You sound like Cheech Marin, who might have lived in Frankfurt for a while. <laughs> Dave's not here, man! Um, all right, so anyways. Yeah, that was Pop Culture Corner. Yeah, you guys like segments, right? I'm just staring at my phone. There's not a lot on here. Look, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I think we have some entertaining guests. But we do have to, as I tweeted, uh, we, we don't have Spencer tonight. No! But we're going to make the best of it. You know? Yeah. A, a, a general malaise has fallen yeah. over the crowd. Maybe the ghost of Spencer will come by. Well, I don't mean that he died. I mean the ghost of his presence. The, the ghost of his, his enthusiasm. <laughs> which, could, uh, which I do think died around episode three. <laughs> I would believe that his enthusiasm is a ghost walking around somewhere. Uh, all right, so, uh, well, okay, so, well, I don't, not to bring things down, but, um, like, uh, so, like, all right, dog sharing, all right, so, well, they got that, they got that new Uber program, there's a, they, they keep adding the things, it keeps getting, there's, like, more and more things in the bottom of Uber, and now the, the thing on the leftmost is Uber pool, where you can, like, pool with Uber people, and then a- Aaron was like, I, I don't think I'd, ever do that she's like well wait i'd do that before i take a regular uber because of all the you know harassment and creepy creepiness that goes on in, in your average uber and i was wondering if that was their point like maybe uber pool is them like they because they can't say uber chaperone <laughs> like right. maybe they really are like hey for the ladies uh, uh well there'll be a, another person there all right. Yeah, so, uh, aren't you just doubling or tripling down on more guys getting in the car with your wife and saying like, "Hey, uh, what are you guys doing later on?" And, uh, well, I guess that's what, that was my thought. Was like, how likely is it? How how does this pool thing work? I was wondering if maybe that's like a maybe it's a fake thing, where the the third person is always just a licensed social a, worker a or something. Marshal, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, they're, and they're just like, like they just clear their throat a lot whenever the the, the driver's like. So, should I take a left up here? Um, no, no, take a right. Oh, sweetie, you don't know anything. <coughs> uh, uh, yes, okay, to uh, left and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, so okay, so do you think Curtis Armstrong uh, got, uh, is mad at us? No. Why? What happened? I don't know. I, 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 I'm, 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 I, I, he, 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 he said he was going because I'm always drunk during the show, and I don't know if like he said. I, he, he, Did anything happen at the end of the last show he was on? No, not okay. at all. No, all right, he, just he, making sure. He, we, we, had, we professed our love to him. He accepted that love. And that was at the top of the show. And then I was like, okay, now the other shoe's going to drop. And then the, usually the show ends in a blackout for me. Like, I don't really – I kind of have to listen to the end of the show. That's why, that's why our role-playing games are so bad. Like, by the end of the show, I'm a little gone. So, like – I can't. It's a little bit of a fog, you know. And I, yeah. I, I was, I just, I remember talking about boxers, and it got, we, you know, we touched on. I don't know, it was like I, I couldn't remember, like, because, a, a, well, he just, he, he hasn't responded to my, my, my direct tweets, which is how we usually communicate, <laughs> and uh, I just, I've just been really paranoid about, about, about Curtis being upset. What you are you raising? Ingo, he says he's going to England. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, hey, Twitter I, he, there. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 with his daughter. They, they, on they, they don't have they don't they don't have the word aluminum there, but they have Twitter. <laughs> All right, fine. He's like spending time with his daughter. He doesn't check his tweets. Fine, yeah. good. <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to be worried about it. I think you're fine. I think you're fine. All right. Well, I, I, I think he's very happy here, and I think uh, there was a, if there was anything, there was maybe a moment of sincerity where we all agreed that we all like each other, and then we talked about how long it took for us to hang out, and then it took for ages for us to actually hang out as friends and not like meet at a party yeah. or whatever. That was at the beginning. By the end of the show, though, it was like we were talking about boxing, and I was like, "Would well, be great at McDonald's, black people." Blah, blah, blah. And I just don't know if I like. 
if that bulldozer had any casualties, you know, if anybody had... I don't think so. I mean, I, ask them. I, Justin I, I, just brought your mail. I don't, uh, <laughs> do, do you get paid to do the show? Is that... <laughs> is that your check? <laughs> Sis boom ba. Sis boom ba. <laughs> what is the sound of a sheep exploding? I'm stealing from Johnny Carson, everybody. Johnny Carson. No, no, I, I, I have a note about our guest tonight and, well, w- and what his, uh, if we play Shadowrun, what his character will be. Oh, I see. Okay, well, I, I actually, we, I, we should bring up our first guest. I'm kind of excited because we haven't, I don't think we've ever, we haven't really had a lot of, uh, is, he, is he back there? What's that? Yes. He's, he's back there, right? Okay, all right. Well, because so, we, 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 we never, we've never done the, uh, the political thing, like, in the sense of, like, like, we've never had anybody come on the show to actually help, help them politically. Like, this is kind of an exciting thing, like, to have a show, you know, like The Daily Show or something like that, where people announce their candidacy. Well, I mean, I mean now it's, 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 it's presidential election season. Right, and, and, I mean, and we've I, become a very important show. Yeah, but, what, what, but I, 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 I truly hope, Dan, that we're not gonna, like, no one's going to come on this show and use that to stump for their, for their own political gain. I think that any candidate that was going to come on this show would be doing so because they had decided that, that this, this demographic is savvy and young and critical thinkers and uh-huh. you know and skeptical and that their votes matter the most in a, and what is sure to be a very important election. I mean, you guys know how I feel about politics. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> when I heard this guy was coming on the show, I I didn't at all have to say, Go, "Wait, who's that?" and have Demarge explain it to me. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, you, 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 well, there's, a, it's, uh, he's a, he's a Republican candidate and, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's been in the news a lot lately. He's a little controversial, but, uh, but, uh, he's, he's, he, I have no, I don't know anything about him and, uh, <laughs> and, but I know you guys have heard all about him and you're always tweeting about him. Let's welcome Bernie Sanders. Senator Bernie Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We. Senator, nice to meet you. pleasure to meet you, Senator. You can just grab any mic you want to sit anywhere you feel comfortable. I assume the mics were rigged with union uh, workers. Uh. That's good to know. I should clarify the introduction. I'm not a Republican. Oh. I'm an avowed socialist. I'm the only independent senator from the state of Vermont in the United States Senate, but I'm running for president as a Democrat because, well, I like to change things up. I feel like I got, I got my information wrong from DeMorge. I thought you were like the new Herman Cain. Look, you get your information wrong like the American people get inaccurate information from the mainstream media, which is controlled by five corporations. It's the same situation. What we're fighting against is the top 1% that controls more than the bottom 60% combined. And if you look at the numbers closer, it's the top 10% of the top 12% of the top 1.1% Year-on-year year, labor-adjusted statistics. Yeah, that has more growth than a, a, large, a, well, a lot of a lot of further statistics further down the line. Uh, I, I, you I, you I, can't I, argue I, with that. So, well, I mean, so, <laughs> I mean, I, we've all seen those charts and stuff about wealth distribution. What do you say to the people that say, like? Uh, uh, Did you know that over two-thirds of charts that are used to illustrate economic data? contains more blue and red graph uh, sections than the 99% of the working class 40% that operates somewhere with between the chocolate and vanilla layers of the middle class cake. Mm. <laughs> Senator Sanders, do you feel that... I know a lot of people think that you might be uh, drawing uh, votes away from, uh, from Hillary. Sure. You? No, I don't think there's any danger of that, and everybody working on my campaign is well aware... <laughs> Is there any truth? Is there any, I, 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 I never want to be a gotcha question kind of interviewer. Well, that's fine. I'm, I, I, my life is an open book, specifically. It's a 20,000-page printout of the Bureau of Labor Statistics <laughs> report for the fiscal year 2014 to 2015. And it's all dot matrix, too. It's all dot matrix printer. Well, yes, because I believe in fiscal <laughs> accountability, so I print on very cheap paper, which is still a dot matrix printer. 
And if I, there... need, if I need further copies, I use a mimeograph machine because <laughs> I'm from the 1970s. <laughs> Senator Sanders, is there any truth to the allegations that your hair is actually a sideways wig? <laughs> I want to... <laughs> Look... I hope, we're gonna, I hope we delve into some hard numbers after this okay. because I think this is a distraction from the issues, but since it's brought up, I will address it for the people. My hair is harvested <laughs> on a monthly to bi-monthly basis to provide cotton candy for younger Americans who come from a socioeconomic background where they could not afford cotton candy, and as you know, the summer months are approaching, so I've donated recently my real hair as cotton candy what, to some what? lower income children in Vermont and yes I do replace it with two wigs <laughs> yeah. that I lower it onto my head <laughs> my union labor like Darth Vader <laughs> in in the rotunda of the Capitol building I, I think both Demorge and I in the green room when we heard your name thought you were that black guy that crazy doctor guy Look, I don't agree with him on the issues, but I respect him. Uh, Bernie, the other one, sure. Look, I, I think I, I think What's I compare very name? well. Ben Carson. Ben Carson. Cool. I'm so relieved that Demorge also <laughs> did, did, had no clue. <laughs> I'm way out of the loop. Look, here. wishful thinking. Look, I'm a presidential candidate that everyone agrees with on everything, but no one will vote for me. <laughs> Senator Sanders, I mean, you sound and, like you're singing my tune for if, sure. If if one third of the two thirds who support my positions were to vote for me, that would be one-sixth of the population that would vote for me, and we wouldn't win the election either. It's, oh, okay. So it, you, you think it would be difficult. You, you, you don't think you're going to win. Look I, look, I don't think I'm here to talk about winning and losing. I think that's the problem with American capitalism, that we've been obsessed too much with the losers, and that's how, that's how the, the middle $40 billion in the federal budget goes to the top 1% of the top 2% of the top, let's say, 17% of the country. Um, do you, is this just kind of a thinly veiled ploy, this run, this, run, is this, this bid for the presidency? Is, is, are you aiming to maybe settle in at vice president? Look, I don't have any aspirations further than maybe a nice walk, maybe a nice cup of warm chocolate from time to time. Senator Sanders! Senator, is there any truth? I will. I Senator look, Sanders, no, 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 hold let me, on a second. Let me finish I'm, the question, Mr. Sanders. Look, if, let me if, if, the provoked, if provoked, I will filibuster. Let me, fi <laughs> let me finish the question. Is there or is there not any truth to the allegation that you are wearing my mom's glasses? <laughs> That's a reasonable question. <laughs> Because what I am doing is wearing glasses that are of the model that is widely available to librarians and mothers across this country who have to work in humiliating conditions as public workers in the education and library systems. And so in solidarity, I wear the glasses that are the minimally covered glasses that you have to wear if you have public health care in these professions. They well, look, see, we're resonating with people who will not vote for me, but we're resonating with them. Senator, they don't even correct my vision to the to the right degree. <laughs> I wear them merely f to be in solidarity with the working, the hardest working people of this country. You, you've, um, I've been very impressed by you. Uh, what, what little I know about you, you've been very strongly in support of women's rights and uh, equal pay. Yes, and, yeah, so I, I, I feel like that would be. Like the, the the most appealing thing for me as a voter is is that you like you actually stand up for uh, for the women. Look, women are fifty percent of the population. How, how many? How but many? If we really dig into the numbers, how many percent is fifty percent? Fifty. Per look, the bottom forty percent of all fifty percent is right. equal to the top twelve percent of the middle. I don't know. <laughs> Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. I feel like I, I really have this urge to bring Barack Obama out here and uh, and have you guys have like a look. He exists. A little debate. Look, I would be happy to go toe to toe with the President of the United States. Let's there bring him out. Let's bring him out, Barack Obama. Is he here? Is he here? Uh, I think he might be taking a shit. <laughs> oh, okay, oh. he's here. Right on the Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Great to see you, sir. How are you? Oh, hello, uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Obama. Sorry about uh, that. Mr. President, how Mr. was David? your shit? 
<laughs> it was uh, uh, it was a bit brief. <laughs> now and, in the uh, green room, Mr. certainly it was uh, instantaneous. D- 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 you, you, if, if, if elected president, my shits will all <laughs> be short in duration, with minimal amount spent out of the federal budget on uh, cleaning up the smell of the room afterwards. <laughs> well, uh, these are these are these are these are your uh, your, uh, your 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 salad days. Uh, you can say things like that, uh, and you can mean. I'm it. sorry. Did you say salad days? Yes. I don't I eat anything as exotic as salad. <laughs> My diet consists of oatmeal mostly, an occasional porridge, and if it's a celebration, I get some raisins. <laughs> Isn't that I, a bit extravagant, Mr. Sanders? Look, a box of raisins in 1970 contained over 40 grapes that had been shrunk down to an edible raisin size. Today, over 40 years later, that same box of raisins contains over 20% less gra- grapes from farm to-, 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 to plate because of Monsanto and genetically modified organisms, which I will fight to stop in the, in- in the impossible scenario where I occupy the White House for even... Two or three weeks before the Pentagon calls a coup d'etat <laughs> because I am simply unacceptable to anyone with power to be in the office. But you, you are also implying that also, likewise, you don't think people will vote for you. All the, all the powerless people, you don't think, you mean, uh, of, course, of course the grandpas of the world don't want you anywhere near the throne, but you think, you think, you think the voters of the world well, that's are what also I, a little uh, jaded. Well, that's what I'm running for. I'm running for the young people, the people out there who are burdened. By, now this is, I'm entering a pandering section. <laughs> you see, uh, 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 here's the thing. Sure. <laughs> Wait, hold uh, on. Let me do my uh, <laughs> Looney Tunes uh, uh, stopping sound. Go ahead. <laughs> you can talk a fair game uh, right now. Sure. <clears throat> when you get into uh, the room, the oval room, uh, there's a red phone. The red phone might ring. It might be the middle of the night. That's no concern to me. I'm colorblind. <laughs> I'll trade every can, phone can, 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 can of every color with the same respect that I would treat an average gray phone (laughs) operating year on year on original AT&T payphone wires. Okay. Mr. Obama, if I might, Mr. President, I might say, I think, look, I respect you as a person and as an antagonist over a nice game of Mahjong. And don't forget, Mr. Sanders, Senator... I guess you're a sen- senator. I thought you were a doctor because I thought you were a completely different human being. Um, th- th- you could use his support. I mean, you're not even running against him. Like, this might be a good time to... Look, I would, but I'm not accepting support from any corporations or any human being that's made up of specifically of corporations, which includes Mr. Obama, and as much as I respect you as a person, I, I think that you, as a labor organizer, did more good for this country than you have occupied the White House. Well, look, the cadence and the volume was there for the crowd to agree, but still to this day, <laughs> not even in the waning days of a presidency that could only be argued as a failure, people are still on his side comedically, uh, room by room. I think, I think this I country... I would argue that these days are not waning. I think this country's ready for a, uh, for a socialist Jewish president. I think I mean, that, that, that would be an awesome, an awesome change of pace. Look, I don't think there's a problem with that, but look, I think, look... If, if people are worried that that's unpopular, socialist, Jewish, don't worry. I'm also an atheist, and um, <laughs> I, that, and um, I also I used to uh, look. I I have a very popular time everywhere I go. <laughs> I get thanked. I I don't think we need to dwell on that any further. I think look, the the bottom forty percent of the top sixty percent who of the of the eleven percent who've even heard of me. <laughs> have 50, 50, 50 opinions on whether I look good <laughs> on C-SPAN. Senator, Senator, uh, could Senator I, could uh, Sanders, uh, what flavor is your cotton candy here? Look, it's traditional sugar flavored, and this was the result of a freak accident when I was, when I was a young man. I saw The Grateful Dead at Brandeis University. <laughs> And there was some very strong lysergic acid uh, 
that I sampled at the time, and it altered me, not unlike uh, uh, Peter Parker, sort of superhero, <laughs> except that my hair turned into cotton candy because it was an outdoor event, and that's what we were eating, and there was sweetness along with uh, LSD, and so um, it's a debilitating, it's a gift and a curse, you might say. <laughs> When your hair tastes so good, when you're doing a speech, a 17-hour speech, like I, you know, I do on a Tuesday, just when I feel like it, it's a humiliating when, uh, when uh, another senator like John McCain gets up after you and just sort of, sort of licks your hair and grabs it and licks it <laughs> like a goat. That's humiliating. And as president, I would only allow that on Sundays and certain holidays. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. Well. I'm a little intimidated. This is the largest crowd I've performed for... Uh, <laughs> We've been doing fundraisers around Southern California. I think you've, you've found your people. I'm just a little... Sure, a yeah, little we've got uh, about 40 bucks out of it so I'm, far. I'm, I'm, I'm sad about how, how, uh, how jaded and cynical and like kind of disheartened you've already become, and I just met you. Like, I, I didn't Look, even know there were guys like you out there. I'm the picture of optimism, but I don't believe in irrational optimism. People say you, you either think the glass is half full or half empty. I believe that the glass can increase year on year <laughs> with targeted investments in certain sectors... <laughs> that the share of the glass for the bottom 40% can be equal to what the share of the glass for the uh, top 10% is using real dollars inflation adjusted back to the original statistics used in the Great Depression. <laughs> and if that's not a ringing endorsement of the potential of the American people, I don't know what is. <laughs> I guess some people just want to hear, you know, like we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna kick butt overseas, and we're, we don't have to be afraid. And everything's Look, gonna be I'm fine. Look, I'm not, I'm not a jingoist. I'm not uh, in favor of uh, uh, wars that are necessary. Um, if there's any butts that's gonna be kicked, uh, they're gonna be voluntary butts. <laughs> you mean pe a... people that want to want us to go to war with them? Look, uh, if if. <laughs> I think that kicking butt should be like abortion. I think it should be safe, legal, and rare. <laughs> and I think it should involve consenting adults whenever possible. <laughs> as far as foreign for policy, I don't believe we should have one. I think that we should pull all our military forces back and uh, replace it with some brownies that we maybe... <laughs> A bake sale of some kind in an international scale, which has never been tried anywhere except Norway, and look at them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> I've never. And I, I am a fan, by the way. I'm a, I'm a fan of the show, the community show. Oh, you, you like it? The look, community? I think, yes, I think it's a fantastic look at what we need to be doing for uh, American young people who are in the education system and the, and the burden of student loans that they have to face. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, don't, you don't mean moving to Yahoo. The top you mean twelve percent of the middle six percent of the seventeen five percent of the let's say APR of eleven point seven percent is equal to or greater than. Now, this is an algebra problem. I don't even know the answer to this. I'm just posing it to the people. If given X, what is Y? Carry the one, but the problem is the middle class no longer can carry the one because the two burden carrying the two and the five. <laughs> All right, Senator Bernie Sanders, everybody. Thank you, uh, thank you. Senator Bernie thank Sanders. You for, thank you for coming thank out. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, sorry, Mr. Look, Obama. If, if you want any more, you can go to my website, <laughs> BernieSanders.org forward slash why not Bernie. Bernie All Sanders. Right. Thank you, Senator. Yes. I didn't. Well, Jamarge, will you stay, please? <laughs> Someone call me an Uber, please. <laughs> what? What happened? Uh, he and I were talking last week about Herman Cain and Ben Carson, and so when I heard Ber <laughs> I immediately switched to Ben Carson, so I'd give you a whole Ben Carson. <laughs> Because it just is in, said, it is in Adomian's wheelhouse to come in as Ben That was Carson. James Adomian, everybody. James Adomian. <laughs> it is well in his wheelhouse. Uh, We've never had someone come out and just do a dedicated uh, one-off character like that. No, yeah, I don't know if that's I don't if that, I don't know if that's what you, he wanted to do. Do you think right. we could get Bernie Sanders to come out and play a uh, Shadowrun with us? Or like, or like? Uh, yeah, or, I or think, would there be too much percentage points and APRs? <laughs> you could get him to do a lot of. Th For example, when we were when I was going on my Bernie uh, my Ben Carson uh, Harmon Kane run. He, for about an hour straight, was just doing Pat Buchanan to a room of kids who had no idea who the fuck Pat Buchanan was. <laughs> <laughs> 
so much so that afterward I was doing amazing Pat Buchanan impressions to people because I was just just copying him. Yeah. Uh, we've had we've had him on before, and I, I, I like, like I, I Aaron and I've talked about how like we, we we like his his impressions come from a different school of thought spiritually, kind of than uh, than the Rich Littles, where you just like figure out how someone talks and then you kind of repeat. I don't know. Like, like he said, like like he 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 always. Uh, 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 S- seems to sympath- sympathize with the the people that he's yeah. mocking. Like they, like he makes you like them. Like they're underdogs and they're they're the heroes of their own stories. Like you don't yeah, get from that a from a fighting position. A thief never knows he's a thief. He always thinks he's doing right. good, doing good work. Yeah, and I and I, I love that I can just be at a party and like and just say, "Hey, Mark Maron, is it okay if I have these chips?" And then he does Mark Maron <laughs> or, or Eddie Pepitone. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. My wife is in a vat of blue water. He does the most amazing Eddie Pepitone. <laughs> two, two Pepitone. There are Pepitone shows where he'll heckle him as Pepitone. <laughs> I wanna, I, one, one of these days, maybe, maybe, I mean, not to be presumptuous, but, you know, the, the most flattering thing in the world would be for to him have to... have him heckle you as you? Yeah. You know, and then, <laughs> like to hear I'm a... I'm sure a, the wheels have already started. A, a Dan Harmon impression. The man does not stop. You know who did a good one at one point was uh, Abed Gaith, uh, real real yeah. Abed. He did a pretty good, but good Dan Harmon. He does. He, he can do. He, he physically becomes everybody. He can't do the impressions necessarily, but he can right. physically become and like do the mannerisms of everybody. It's very shocking. Abed, yeah, yeah, yeah. I re- that, that's like kind of how I got to know him. Like he was at a party and everyone was gathered around in a circle. It was like you made your way through the circle and everyone was just shouting names at this guy. Who was like contorting at the, <laughs> with with each name and kind of like. Was on overload. Looking back on it, uh, that may be how how how, how we, we broke him. Uh, uh, he, been, he was already there. But he, he was a <laughs> he was an accountant when he walked into that party. Uh, uh, all right. So, anyways, all right. So, uh, I'll never forgive you for that because I introduced him as a Republican. I didn't even know what the hell was going we'll try, on. I tried to correct. Once I once he came in, I was like, "What are you doing?" And he just he told me. I went, "Oh fuck!" I complete. So we tried to rewrite it and get the message. Oh. It's well, that, I mean, that, that wouldn't have helped. That's I exactly the information I, I had. I just, you know what? I, I just don't I'll know take, who these I'll people are. I'll bite the bullet on all of that. That's, yeah. that's my thing. Sometimes who is it? Well, well, let, uh, can we talk about the other guy, though? He's a, he's a doctor. Like, 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 this, is, this is a new, new tradition in the post-Obama you know, there Republican world. There is this world. effort in the, on the Republican side always, and, they will not, and it will not get – and I shouldn't even say this because I don't want to give them the, the, the key to the, the portal. But they, you know, they refuse uh, to access – uh, people like us, our age, who are Republicans, and 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 have a sense of how to run the internet, how to promote through the web, how to do other things, uh, they just they they really do run off this hierarchy that the elders know better, and they're consistently out of touch. And they every I think they run of these campaigns, they focus on. Right now, it's it's because of Obama. It's a black thing. They try to find some sort of minority right. savior. That's gonna to find, and, then, and then that's where it goes into fear mongering because then they go, okay, uh, what what part of the black culture are we going to do appeal they, to? W- yeah, and do you look at the way that they gravitated to Herman Cain last time, which is hilarious because this guy, uh, there was no part of that guy that was serious at any point, and yet <laughs> there was a six week period where he was the leading he was candidate. The guy. He was the guy. They had all eliminated. Bachman turned out to be a head spinning freak. <laughs> Uh, you know, there was a there was a Rick Perry did everything he could to blow it, including that moment where he went to Vermont. They gave him a bottle of, of maple syrup, and he was tripping balls on pills and booze. Maddow <laughs> wrote nothing for two days. She just played that full tape for two days <laughs> of him kissing a bottle and then gesturing to women in the audience <laughs> and blowing. It. it was fucking insane. And so here comes Herman Cain. Keep in mind, at this time when he finally had to go, when he finally had to go. His dismount was somebody, he was giving a speech not about saying goodbye, because he actually never said, I quit. He said, <laughs> I'm suspending my campaign uh, for the rest of my life. Yeah, but he never. <laughs> but a person, he's on satellite feed, and somebody's walking around, how you doing, man? And he's like sitting there staring into space, because it just everything that he's done and everything that you've got to deal with now, and where do you go when you've got six weeks in the spotlight, and now you leave. And, uh, and he said... Uh, a man once asked me if I could be any ice cream which one would I be (laughs) and I said Rocky Road 
because it has been a rocky road to the president. <laughs> this is what he said. And this guy was the leading now, candidate. If he opened with that, if, that, if that's how we started off, then, then we would like that yep. guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, I mean, but you just said you said something that distracted me back there a, a ways, a stretch, um, as the Republicans say. Um, back there, as the crow flies, a yonder. Um, the 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 you you you. Do you really think that there is? I mean, I know that there is such a thing as a as the concept of a fiscal Republican that doesn't give a shit about any of this like other like voodoo um, that has been, that we've come to associate with this tent but 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 still don't you think that they've crunched those numbers because that would be less work for them if they thought that there were so many young people out there that would just answer the call of pragmatism financially that you you you, you implied that maybe you think that that there's like a tragedy for the Republican Party that they're hung up on this on this you know, all this other non-economic crap as if they could, like, they could somehow get the popular well, can, majority look, in an all honest I can talk, way. All I can talk to you about is this. My contemporaries um, who don't agree with me politically, the ones that I get in serious discussions with, uh, where the argument is not about shutting somebody up, about make, talking louder than somebody, <laughs> where it's about the actual mathematics of argument and rhetoric, where if you know something that I don't know, we're going to hash this out until I know what you know. Uh, but if you don't, shut the fuck up and take my information and move on. These kinds of arguments, I just start which are based on logic, then, which we don't teach. We don't teach in public schools. We don't teach logic. We don't teach civics. So you have kids going to public venues and pissing on walls because they don't realize they own a part of that. Right, right. You have people you know, saying, I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you because they don't understand that that's not an argument. Mm -hmm. They think that, that I had an argument with my friend. No, you didn't. You didn't have a discussion they've been, about they've been infantilized. I mean, they've, they've taken the, the – we had – you know. They, well, they, they, they've been limited in what they've been in, – in, in, in terms of what, how they can see the world. And but the they, ones I mean, that I have we, serious I mean, arguments we, with, uh, uh, those people, okay. uh, continue right. They write, for, they write for Bush. They write – I mean, I have friends who are Democrats who actually wrote for Bush. Uh, because that was a job that they could take. It was the best job that they could take. And also, the there's barely any difference between uh, those jobs. Okay. Beca because you're writing. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I used to write ads for Coke, but fuck, I can only work for Pepsi. What am I going to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. No, that's it. But that's literally it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's refreshing again. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's always my job. Vote red. I was sitting. Uh, Sorry. I brought I've, to you by <laughs> Frito Lay. <laughs> Um, but, but, wait, but, but wait, 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 wait. I, want to, I want to worship. But here's my Jeff, thing. Jeff, I want to worship. Finish this thought. But there Jeff, is... I want to worship. <laughs> There's a, but there is a. There, Dan, yeah, let these... Demarge finish his thought. <laughs> I wouldn't have done the fifth one. I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I like Comedy four. comes in fives, man. Comedy <laughs> comes in fives. No, they're these. They're. Yeah, these people are my friends. They're all over, they're all over the place. They're my colleagues and 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 everywhere. But uh, you know, they're they're tapping in now. They got sidetracked by this Tea Party thing. There's this whole neocon thing of creating enemies and creating arguments where there are no arguments because you think that your populace uh, is going to vote for you no matter what, and you've got to search out certain areas and own those areas and it gets expand it expands and expands and expands. There's a hierarchy that's set up that they bought into. It's been going on since uh, early seven, mid seventies or whatever. Right. And I it say, stepped like, up you, you and, and, and I were born into this, so I don't even know Yeah, like, and it stepped up pace uh, when Clinton went in office immediately. Right. Where they sort of threw out all of the understanding of how the things, that, the graces that you allow the president for Did better or for worse. they panic because of cable TV and like? I don't think it's panic. It's just hunger. They they want right, well, their power back. They had power for X amount of years. They did everything that they could. So they just became and the other the Democrats party were because sought. it became like a world where you could get elected by 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 from their perspective shenanigans by by, by yeah. lumping everyone in that wants hope and change or whatever the rhetoric is for because it. So then even, they became ironically. This horrible shadow monster, like like that is that makes the really easy villain because they're constantly lying and then engaged in all kinds of like open, open faced like yeah, hypocrisy. So. And I mean, like, they sort of have no choice now but to buy into uh, not the younger minds that have a symbolic resonance for it because they've gotten burned on that now. This, this woman in South Carolina who was like insane that they put in office. 
Um, and, no, and no you know, it, it's just it's there are like these pockets where they pick young people and say this is our masthead, and then they turn out to be you know ill qualified. Well, like these Joe the plumber guys, you mean, or do you mean any like of actual that, a, any a, of that? A, a, a these are actual people running who oh, okay. they shore up and and they end up winning and you know because they look good on the surface and then they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to legislate. They don't know how to. I mean, you can you can tell that that's what they thought Barack Obama was. I was, I was paying a little bit of attention this last time because it was a long time ago, and I still had something in me that was a little bored and was getting like drawn in because Barack Obama was so charismatic, and the other side was so uncharismatic that it actually made politics, although constantly nauseating as always. I refuse to believe in any of it, but the drama of it I really did enjoy because he really was. I really enjoyed watching him in this sort of nazarene capacity like just like gla- you know like just 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 like the, that's them throwing all this like shit at him that. and careful him like well i'm not no i'm not going to be careful because if it's, it's not going to be fun i'm not going to fucking care at all like, like what do you mean like like he was he he was a awesome like ninja christ figure because he he did he did not he did not resort to he did not get his like he he was he was he was diplomatic and gentlemanly and like classy and and humorous and uh, it was fun to watch him win because of his personality. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it was fun to watch the 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 bad guys like get so angry. Well, uh, what was so much at stake. What for was not fun, uh, at least for me, and and I'm, uh, is that in the run up to that, he had to run against or within his own party. And at each point that somebody felt challenged by him, uh, there were you know people. Turn. I mean, Hillary ran that that had that critical, yeah, uh, Ohio uh, weekend where she released that red phone ad on 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 Friday, this sort of borderline uh, race baiting um, uh, ad with the with the stock footage of a young girl, a young white girl in a bed and a phone ringing, and right? Then, uh, a mushroom cloud, and then a picture of you know, of, of Bin Laden. Like this, right. is, this is crazy. Right. Like, like the implication was that because like she's Hiroshima because Mona she's Mona technically like, literally been in the White House. Yeah, and when then, that phone rings, she she won't go like, "Holy fuck, what the fuck!" But that's the kind of but that's the kind of thing. They're, what they're talking who, about who is do like, you, who do you want to pick up targeting. that? Well, who, who do you want to pick up that phone that will uh, that little white girl sleeping in the room? A black dude. <laughs> <laughs> then they find out. Then you find out two weeks later that. The girl uh, is stock footage from a Lionel train ad or, or some sort of train ad, or like Amtrak or something, <laughs> and that the girl as a grown up uh, doesn't endorse the ad. She actually, she actually oh, was it. working for Obama out of Seattle or someplace, like someplace in the Northwest. That's awesome. Uh, but by that time, the Tuesday had run, so that primary had been run, and he'd already, you know, lost that that state. And there were these little these little upturns. Uh, all all the way through, and you know it's, 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 ter- it's yeah, it's a horrible yeah. What, what the fuck am I now? Anyway, we, but yeah. it's it, it, it's so we all agree we're not going to vote in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say that out loud because there's too many kids listening to me, and I don't want to be part of the problem. I just I, think that the re- I just think that the Republican resources are gone. They now realize, and it's going to be interesting when it happens when they start empowering uh, uh, their their informed their. Uh, uh, educated youth to really take control of that campaign. And the, uh, the, uh, and the elders stop this sort of shit that we can all see because even their own constituency now can see this sort of this sort of baiting and weirdness that's going on, and, and the, the I checked out the, the, it was the, it was so long ago. It was that it was that oh, big election, and I, I voted since then. I voted for Obama. I was just like I don't, I never want to be that guy. There's such a terrifying fucking terrorism. Uh, uh, on, it's like this non-vote. Is like, you didn't vote? Like you're fucking you AIDS cancer asshole fuckface. Um, <laughs> The the, uh, the 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 so I, I, I do I do I do turn out because I just want to say I, I want to be able to go yeah I did and I also don't give a shit, um, <laughs> but but when I really checked out spiritually and mentally, the way to do that this time vote Bernie Sanders right well that's how, and yeah, I, 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 I I will I, I wish people would vote I voted vote, and vote I vote their don't conscience give a shit. Uh, that, I, I don't I don't even know if that guy really exists I uh, <laughs> but but I like I like his style. 
You are um, the top one percent of the bottom forty-five percent. I, 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 the he's, lowest he's certainly third singing my tune. And there's always one guy early on that's like, "Hey, I'm Mr. Elfman from the trees," and uh, <laughs> and it's like a big joke. And it's like, but we always know at the bottom of it all, it's like, like for instance, like, oh yeah, God forbid, an atheist Jewish socialist become the president because they'd care more about their country than their church. They'd uh, they'd believe in equality financially, and they'd take their job very seriously. <laughs> like, like, oh no. No, the stereotypes associated with these groups. <laughs> a Jewish atheist? Oh, God. Um, well, but I don't mind. know if that guy is. I don't know what James was making up, but I don't know if that guy exists or not. Yeah, yeah he does. He's real. Uh, what blows my mind, like, I, my, my, my father is a conservative, and, I, and we, we don't really talk politics, but, also, but he's, not a, he's not a dummy. He, he's not, he's not a, a Rush Limbaugh lunatic, you know, like, as, far as, you know, as far as I'm concerned, when people are party line right wingers. Also, I think I don't like liberals much either. I don't, I don't really like any of it. I, 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 there's, no, there's no good politics for me. Uh, you, you, the, the idea that anybody thinks that they know how everybody else ought to operate is fucking insanity or dim-witted. So I think it's foolish to say, like, like, all conservatives are out of their mind, or all liberals are just a bunch of fucking dickheads. And, like, but that's how people think, and the idea that, that, there's, this, that, that there's these two polar opposites duking it out in a ring is, is nuts. They're so close to each other I- ideologically, and then we, we create stupid things to argue about that really have nothing to do with anything, and we make a big argument, and the right wing right now seems to have made, as somebody said, a constituency out of crazy. And, they, they, they've, and there is a, there's a huge amount of crazy people that will vote for crazy shit. Do you I think was, it'll be different? I, well, sorry, I was, just to finish my point, like the, uh, I was at uh, Seattle-Tacoma Airport today at the Anthony's Fish Place having a Bloody Mary before I got my plane, and I was reading my book, and there was a guy next to me, and I, uh, I put it on my Instagram, I, a little video of him. He was burping and farting and grunting and <laughs> just, just making every goddamn, he's farting all over me, and then... Er, er, and then <laughs> <laughs> but just, I was like, I said, and also... Bar tapping, which is my least favorite thing. And this guy was like 55, maybe 58-ish. ish. And he, I, I, bar tappers drive me up the fucking tree. And he was a one-man band of just bumming me out. And, <laughs> and I finally moved a stool over when he finally con- like farted a fog around me and my Bloody Mary. And I moved around. The th- I, I moved a seat away. And I don't think he liked that much. Uh, then he kind of was engaging everybody, like, oh, you got a Boston shirt on. He had a southern accent, and like, I, I, he really did sound like, he you got a Boston shirt, so what do you think about that Tom Brady uh, uh, verdict, and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and the guy's like, oh, you know, I don't really, you know, I'm a Boston fan. I thought it was fair, but, you know. And the guy's like, ah, blah, blah. Hey, bartender, like, oh, I got to get out of here. And, uh, blah, blah. and uh, the bartender closed him out, and he, and he announced to the bartender, I'll do it as loud as he did it. And the bartender was two and a half feet from him, and he, he announced this for you. The, the room, Harmontown, you would all have heard this at the bar, and there's music playing, and it's an airport, and there's a band playing over there. And he goes, well, I don't like y'all's politics, but them oysters was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting right next to him like, you A political mastermind. Yeah, and so the bartender, without a beat, and, and, like, I don't know that he was gay, but he, he, he had that kind of, like, polish to him that maybe he was. He was certainly – he wasn't, like, a gruff jockey, n- never going to be gay guy. He goes, um – he goes, um – he goes, uh – you know, you know, you, Johnson can't be gay, right? You know you can't be gay if you're in sports? Do you guys know that? Uh, but, no, but, but, he, but he goes, uh, what politics are those? And, and, the, and, and uh, the guy, this guy's, like, you know, maybe early 40s. And he goes, uh, uh, you know, I just mean, you know, like, you know, around here. It's like, around where? <laughs> and the guy's like, he's like, he goes, do you mean like in Seattle? Well, you know, you guys, are blah, 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 blah. and he's and, and he's like, what's your point? <laughs> and he goes, oh, and he goes, oh, no, just give me. And he signs a bill and leaves the guy a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> Because like, he really just meant the oysters were good. Yeah. They were that good. Here, he, he wasn't going to stand around Seattle and not leave a parting shot and say, like, you guys are all a bunch of, like, uh, women-loving, fag-kissing, uh, fucking right. bunch of weirdos. Rootin' tootin'. Yeah. <laughs> or the opposite of rootin' No, you guys never rooted or tootin'. No, I'm rootin' tootin'. Yes. <laughs> you guys are, 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 are Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Right, right, buddy? You know what I'm talking about. Anatoly? Anatoly knows Anatoly what I'm talking about. exactly what he's talking about. That's a little inside joke for our yeah. Russian friend. But the thing is, like, 
Well, but me is like, we, like we can't just go around hating fifty percent or whatever the you know the populace of people that are the voters are like, like we're, we can't all be right and we can't all be wrong. It's like it's just a the idea that we've been polarizing is too. Yeah, it's silly. It's two and they, and they know that we, we've been nuts. barking that at them for three years of this podcast, and you and I have been barking it for since we were their age. But but I, I, what I wonder is now that the country is arguably. In jeopardy, <laughs> uh, uh, or maybe as I mean, you know, because it's it's been arguably it's been it's been it's been it's been supposedly in jeopardy since way before I was born. I mean, it was in jeopardy because we were fighting Anatoly's grandparents, uh, uh, and we, we it turns out that was a fucking Wizard of Oz if there ever was one. Uh, uh, the, 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 if ever there was a wizard, there was a wizard. Was we the, 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 the there's always by the side like, oh God, the Chinese are buying everything. The Japanese, oh, we owe the France so much money. Like, it's, I, I don't, I, so I can't tell. I feel like because I'm 42, it kind of, I, I kind of get the sense that actually. Actually, we are crumbling now. Uh, but the, maybe that's just. Like, but but if we are, are maybe will we now see maybe three political parties? Maybe that maybe four, like <laughs> major <laughs> ones, like big ones. Yeah, like, because there's like maybe four ways to think about the future. How, how about fifty and seventy like other countries like that that have like or high like the history high of our IQs, country yeah. when we were forming it and there were like a oh, thousand ways to like. You know, commit treason against the, the 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 British crown. You know, and there were like a lot of fucking ways to think about it. Um, yeah, now it's just like, isn't it just, just a sign just so of absolute luxury that we've gone into like, ah, are you a lefty or a righty? <laughs> yeah. it's a, it, is it? Aren't, aren't we just sort of sucking our thumb and kind of like? I think it's, uh, what, it's what the main thing for me, just on a style standpoint, if you just look at America in terms of like, if, if it was a person that w- would you, would you want to hang out with that person? The answer is fucking no way. You would never <laughs> hang out with America at a party. You would fucking absolutely be hanging out in fucking like 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 Norway. You know, like with like, like well, your, your a, friends would be other but people. I'm kind of fascinated with this concept because it all depends on whether you're inside or outside this black box. So, like, like if you're inside of it, like I, my new thing is, I just call it King's Landing. Like, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of cool in here unless you're like super poor. Like, like, like you, you, so you see they go on a little tour through King's Landing, and there's a lot of people going like, "My arm hurts." <laughs> um, whore, 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 bastard. Uh, like, like they're on the edge and they're on the verge, but, 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 like, there's, you know, like we're hanging out and we're like trying. I don't know. There's a there's a concept inside the box called America that everything could be super cool, but like, yeah, if you zoom out and look at its relationship yeah. with the planet, then definitely no, you it's don't a guy, hang out with that guy at a party. It, it's a guy with a baseball hat on backwards and a tribal yeah. tattoo. Yeah, and, and and but he won't even be nailed down about that. If if you if you if it, and if you go up to him and say, hey. Uh, I noticed your baseball cap and your tribal tattoo. I take that to mean you'd like a Coors. He might go, fuck you, you jerk, you broke-ass piss of shit. <laughs> piss of shit? <laughs> like, 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 and you'd be like, what? And he's like, I'm fancy. <laughs> I'm backwards cap tribal tattoo fancy pants. <laughs> Wait, but I thought that, yeah, well, you, you don't get paid to think, Germany. <laughs> Keep making my Volkswagens, brah. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't hang out with that guy. No, that, you would not hang out with that yeah. guy. There's a, there's like, no, no, because like, no, because America. <laughs> if, if America, like, went to like. Out for the evening, America would not go to the opera or to the theater or to a uh, or to a. It, I it, like this it, game. It, it would it would go to it would absolutely be in the second row of a UFC fight. That's where America would. I say I, I think that's too simple. That's too that, that that's that kind of thinking is what gets people like George Bush elected if he can convince you he's from Texas. You know, like, 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 it's like oh we're just simple folk. We just we just like populism and like like popular stuff. And if it makes sense, like crushing a bro with a brew. Um, <laughs> Or sometimes the other way around, they, they, but or pissing the shit. A, there's a there's a scheming like like there's a there's an underhandedness to it too. There's all this snootery and charcuterie. <laughs> and Vlad and Poodery. Vladimir we're, Poodery. We're, we're 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 nouveau riche and we're 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 a, we're a, we're a, we're a, a trailer park yeah, beach. Yeah, we're we're. we're <laughs> We're the, we're the end of the Roman Republic. It's it's exactly uh, ancient Rome, man. It's, uh, it's, we, we, it's I mean, let's not root for it. I live in a big house on a big hill. 
I'm just, I'm just keep hoping it's steep enough. Every time I climb it, and I, uh, I'm out of breath. I, I hope the same thing is happening to poor people right now. Because if I keep getting fatter and they keep getting thinner, this is going to make a fun climb for them, and I'm going to be halfway up, yeah. like eating a cheeseburger. No, the, the, the poor people in America are pretty fat too. Right, so there's a, a, that's a good sign. And, 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 and the two parties. The fact that everyone's a big fat baby that's going like, are you this or are you that, means that things haven't even begun to go down yet. That's my question. It's like, shit's going to go down. And I, 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 I'm not one of these people that's like, like, like loves like panicking everybody. I'm just like, so like, like I, when people talk about like super volcanoes and avian flu and Ebola and, and like, uh, or even of like political like panic buttons and stuff like that, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Do you really think that that is the thing that's going to happen? Like, like, like if tomorrow the dollar was worth a penny instead of a dollar, which isn't that big a difference. If tomorrow you woke up and the dollar was worth a penny, you'd have about six hours before your week would be fi- like different. Like, like it wouldn't. It would. You would be like like shit would be immediately all over the. Everybody would like the, everything would be fucked up. Six hours and like like pe- you'd be like ca- you wouldn't be able to call people like like things would be it would be Armageddon just because we'd think it was Armageddon be because what the fuck is the dollar except our gift certificate to ourselves for an ice cream we're never gonna get <laughs> and as soon as it says we, we lick it and there's no ice cream flavor on it we're going to flip a shit bird if that's an expression <laughs> over the last four minutes you've coined well, some doozies well you. <laughs> You better start making up new languages now because each sector is going to have their own. I'll, I'll tell you. The, the, You're not going to go into the free fire zone. They're all going to be speaking an amalgam of Chinese and Mexican. I, 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 that means I'm holding a thermonuclear hand grenade. You've got me terrified, and I, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. You, you've got me terrified the moment a dollar is worth a penny that, that uh, people will start crushing bros with brews. <laughs> <laughs> They'll, as, right now we crush brews with bros right that can flip like the magnetic polarity of the earth like <laughs> we, the, imagine a world where also, you crush bros apparently we can start pissing as shit so that, <laughs> yeah. that's horrible I don't know you know, what is it with me tonight <laughs> I, think, I think I I, dr- I, drank, I drank myself in New York into oblivion like like oh really Dan tell us about it the, uh, <laughs> wh- 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 why how how did that happen how did that what, 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 was someone getting married um I I will, I think I pinched a nerve. Or I, I scheduled a doctor's appointment, but I got like every once in a while I'm like, yeah, my pinky's a little numb. Like I, I I'm like I think I drank myself to death, and we're just living out the final hours. <laughs> it's possible, and, and I'm and I'm 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 okay with it. Like I I wanted to have kids, but uh, like like like. Oh, wait. <laughs> After New York, that ship has sailed? Well, no, no. I'm just saying, like, it's just becoming increasingly, like, I'm getting that feeling of, like, uh, of, like, well, either your kid's going to be John Connor or he's going to be one of those skulls. <laughs> <laughs> to put it in strictly Terminator 2 <laughs> terms. <laughs> like, 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 just to use that movie as a, an example. Like, 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 so what are the odds that my kid's going to... And pretty hot that my kid would be John Connor. I agree. You don't have to say it. If anyone was going to raise the hope of, the, of society in Los Angeles, like, yeah, I do think it would be me. I do. But I don't know if he'd get the message in time. Like, I don't know. He'd be looking at me and going, like, so why are robots bad? This guy seems to like, jerk off to laptops a lot. He's... <laughs> Really loves playing Minecraft. Like, why would my son? I need to get my shit together and have a baby so that I can teach him jujitsu. And I just, I have so much Minecraft to play. So I guess my point is, if I, if I, if I were to get so drunk that I died before I had a baby, you, you might have doomed us to a, to a. To a terrible apocalypse. No, no, no. Someone else will have John Connor. It's 9 11, by the way. <laughs> Woo! Look, it took us a few years, but we're cheering for 9 11. Yeah. 
We didn't think that was going to happen in the weeks following the <laughs> tragedy plus dying. time. Yeah. yeah, think about it. Like, with the six months of those buildings falling and all those people dying. How <laughs> Thanks for bringing it back to that. <laughs> If, so, if, if somebody said to you, Dan, Dan, you and Jeff Davis are going to be on stage doing a podcast, and when you point to a clock and say it's 9-11, the whole crowd will cheer. Uh, I would, I what would, year do you think that will be? I don't know. You might have said, you might have well, said You're making me feel like I'm a, I don't always oh, – it's like it's, the, the joke is about the number having significance. It's, it's like no, that, you're making – you're bringing – you're tying it to the corpses in the rubble, and I'm I'm out. <laughs> I, I, I'm not like I, like it's it is it is terrible when people die all the time. It always will be. But he's the, say, the number so being important is funny. It's funny. It's, you know it's weird though. And, uh, uh, and again, I talked to Professor Brian Cox, and he says it's all just coincidence. Uh, I've been looking at my clock, and all the time now it's nine ten. Really? Yeah. So maybe I'm I'm going back in time. <laughs> Uh, we did have a controversy. Wait, wait, what a controversy? Now I'm Helen Slater. What? what are, are you? Are, how drunk are you right now? One to ten. I. Uh, this is my. Well, I filled it up a couple times when the, I, when the lines between political satire and my ignorance were so blurred that life was a teardrop. I. I did. I did fill this a couple times, but. But you're not. Dr- you actually, when, when you drink, you can drink a lot of vodka and still be very articulate. Would Thank you. you. That that that's the problem. Like I, I'm sorry. Like in Portland and New York, those those towns are my those are my towns, baby. I I, I drank a lot. Did you hang out with Dino and get it on with him? Yep, I did it. I did it all. I did it all. Like my definition of it all. Like like I hung out at a lot of bars and had a lot of fun conversations with a lot of wonderful people. Uh, New York is very friendly. I don't know. If the, now it seems like that's the gimmick. I think that's just Dino's New York. Dino knows how to take you through New York and it becomes like this magical, wonderful place where you're just walking into these creepy places and everyone is so happy I and that's so... Just, that's just New York. I, that's I, just my... I, I mean, well, I... But I think... I mean, so maybe you're like Dino and maybe I'm the odd man out, but I... Like, I, I was always so intimidated by that city. I always felt like it was so, like, hustle and bustle and, like, <laughs> like, like, like you're in the way and, like, you know, it's all about practicality <laughs> so and more insectoid and... Like I just like now when I go there, like it, it, it's like it's like this honeycomb of dive bars, and like everyone's just like kind of like they don't they they know you're from out of town, but they don't care, and they're like happy. Yeah, to where did you go? Do you, what places did you go? Uh, Do you Radio anything? City Music Hall. Okay. <laughs> they exactly. have they have this like lounge in the. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll they'll talk to you. And there was a lady there that kicks for a living. And only at Christmas. What a city. Why would they attack that town? <laughs> I got, see, you guys feel how I feel when you bring it to the actual, yeah. So, boo him. You were, you were booing him. Good. They were booing you. No, they weren't. Um, I just I would have to like like so I just like like one little tiny little like like little cinnamon hot apple from the apple pie of of, of New York that that is largely a blur but was so fun, uh, like <laughs> like sitting at a bar with Dino and uh, and this guy like like came out of the back room and he was wearing this like he was like eight feet tall and I guess if he if Certainly, I wouldn't describe him this way if he were present, but it seemed like it seemed like his head was too small for his giant body, like 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 he kind of and he had like this like um, like a sports jersey on, like a like a muscle shirt and uh, like kind of like I don't know. He just had this like, these big giant arms and this little tiny head, and uh, and he was just coming out of the back room, and he and he had this furrowed brow and was like. Uh, looking for his wallet as he's heading out of the bar, and and uh, Dino's in the middle of uh, uh, talking to people, and he goes like, "Oh, sorry, everybody, hold on. The the guy I paid to beat the shit out of me is here," <laughs> and and <laughs> and we just all looked at the guy and we started laughing because it really looked like this guy was like like like, like, like his job is to beat you up, and we we're like, "Yeah, it's funny. It does look like you're," and he's like, "What? What? It looks like you looks like you beat people up for a living." He's like, "I do. I'm a professional boxer." Uh, <laughs> 
why does everybody react to me that way? And we're like, oh, and, and he's like, he sat down. And we're like, let us buy you a drink. He's like, I don't drink. Look at me. Uh, and he was like, <laughs> but he, he had this like really thick uh, accent and was like, he was, it was just like he was. Re- he spent the five minutes because I was like, can I get you a power bar or what? Like, it was like reverse bullying this guy, but like, like, like loving him. And, and, and he's like, but he, he's like, no, seriously, it's like fucking weird. Like, I don't choose this, you know. Like, I. Like, Every year, it's like my arms keep getting bigger, and like I, I, we, we're just dying laughing because we're like, because we're dying, and we're laughing. It's just like a young, big, strong guy who's like, "Someone get me out of this body." <laughs> it's such a, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening in other cities. You know, it's just like, like I gotta go to the gym now, and beat, more, beat up more people. It's, it's all I could do. <laughs> I feel like New York is really good. Like people make eye contact, like they flirt in bars, and people talk to each other. Like people, like uh, there's a lot more stranger interaction I, I've found. And from people I know that have lived there, they say, yeah, it's, that's that's very appealing and that's great. But like the, the relationships don't really. They're, they're they're very good at short, kind of superficial, like 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 short, quick fix, uh, like relationships and and hangouts. So like there's a lot of that going on, but like. Like dating is very hard, I hear out, out there and stuff like that. Right. It's, it, it's it's very transient out there because it's there's so much going on. I don't I don't know if that's true or not. You, but maybe we have some New Yorkers here that agree or disagree. Yeah, it's just, it's okay. just very busy. Everybody's just very busy all the time, and everything's just kind of moving. So it's hard to keep track of people yeah. for over a long period of time. And yeah, and people also like exit. They just exit the city at different points. So you might be dating somebody like you know what? It's time for me to get out of here, and then they're just gone. <laughs> You've been part of a, 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 a sort of cutting I've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now now it's time to heal up and yeah. go to Oregon. <laughs> I went, there was once I went uh, back years years ago. I went back um, for uh, I think it was like the last. Before Christmas, the last showing of SNL, it was a whole week where we were all back. And Josh Faden was there. And James Adomian might have been there. I think Derek Waters was there. Jonah Ray was there. Um, all these people from L.A. just happened to be in town at the same time. And there was a Friday night where we all agreed that we were going to meet at one bar and then from there go to another friend of mine, a bar that was near a friend of mine um, in, in, in Brooklyn. So we set up this bar. And a bunch of great stuff happened leading up to this. So it was already a good night. And we get to this bar, and it's sort of a yuppie bar uh, on Delancey Street. And we're just hanging out. And I'd been there before, uh, so I thought it was a good hangout. And right around 11.30, quarter to 12, people started coming in and going downstairs in the same bar. Uh, But these people were wrapped in vinyl uh, one person was leading another person in on all fours. <laughs> and I remember, like, at some point, Fadum goes, where are they going? And I go, oh, there's another great bar downstairs. Because I remembered in that moment, oh, yeah, Friday night, there's a dungeon downstairs. Was it lit? <laughs> at, what? Was it lit? No, I think it's, it might even be Delancey Street Bar. Yeah, the Delancey. Yeah, the Delancey. Delancey. That's wow, it. I think it's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I said, so I go, oh. I go <laughs> hey, hey, Josh, it's a, it's a great bar downstairs. You should go check it out. And Josh went downstairs and then didn't come back for like an hour. <laughs> and he came back and he's like, what was going on? <laughs> it was just a museum of, of I had these friends that told me years, years ago, a long time ago, like 12 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, to meet us at a bar in Hollywood that I don't think is there anymore. It's near where Bordner's is, and it was like it's changed. I think it's next door to Bordner's. And it used to be like kind of a, like a leather club, or I don't know what the hell. Uh, but it wasn't that bar. It was near that near that place. And we, they go meet us at this bar, and we'll, we'll all meet up there, and then we'll all go to this other thing. And it's kind of like a like a like a sexy like S and M kind of themed bar. Like fine. So we go in there, and uh, it wasn't just S and M themed. It was fucking on. And there was a <laughs> there was a guy. That I would say, you know, 30 year old, 28 year old guy on a sawhorse, like strapped down to like all the legs, like, like arms and legs strapped down, laying across, totally naked. And no eye protection. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a couple women like working on him with, 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 with whips and like car batteries and whatnot. And then uh, out, of, out, of his, out of his asshole was half of a very large hammer. <laughs> Well, you can tell by the end of it, there's a claw hammer, and by the size of the head of the hammer, and, you, and only about maybe five inches of it like out, like, there's, there's t- eight or nine or ten inches of a hammer up that guy's butt. Wait, what do you, okay, hold on. So, you, the important thing to me is that the head of the hammer was the, what you were looking at. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Because you were like, it's a claw hammer, and you could tell from the claw. It was like, what was in the... I don't know, and you brought me around to a place where, like, okay, so the handle of the hammer is up his ass. Okay, fine. <laughs> no, but, uh, Jesus, big but, uh, deal. So, so we sat there drinking, and like, this guy was getting the, the fucking full Monty <laughs> 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 Like People are having drinks. This guy's got a hammer in his butt. Yeah. <laughs> Table five needs bread. <laughs> 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 I, n- I had nothing to say, so <laughs> clean, clean up in aisle three. Uh. How do you know when you're finished? How do you know when you're finished? How do you know when you're finished? Yeah, I when th- you have a hammer up your ass. Yeah. How do you know when you're finished? Like, when does that guy go? Got it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Tabitha, yeah. Samantha. And then he, <laughs> same time next week. He, he walks out, and they're like, "Oh shit, our hammer." <laughs> I mean, I th- we, we fa- lose more hammers yeah. that way. The fascinating thing about that stuff is, like, when Dino, when Dino has experiences, there is a. I, 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 I think it's okay for me to say this without drawing like uh, either jeers or cocked eyebrows or anything, because I think that I assume that's what that Fifty Shades of Grey business is: is our increasing awareness that we are a little jealous of of people who are able to have heightened like and 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 i think if you're a human being like like heightened sexuality if that does involve like crazy shit that we would look at as being way distant from prom night um <laughs> like like that 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 it's like almost like well yeah cuz like wolves can do prom night like it's just like i'm a wolf and i haven't had sex yet and the female wolf's like me neither so here we go okay we're done <laughs> Oh, you got pregnant? Let's have more normal wolves. Um, <laughs> like, like, whereas there are some people out there that are like, you know, and, and the internet has made them more able to do it through with control and safety and like, like, like while still, like, I don't know, they just have this whole fucking like network and crazy, like, they're, I, I and I swear, like, like, I, it's not, it, it's not gonna work for me. I'm going to my grave very happily, like, 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 like kissing Aaron and like sometimes coming and like making a baby, and then like I'm gonna tell him do the same thing. But if he doesn't, fine. Um, <laughs> like, 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 but, but, like, I do see the nobility, like, or the. Uh, I definitely don't look down on it. What people are like, 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 because D- 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 Dino, like. He has adventures. Like yeah. he has, like, like he, like he tells one person this thing, and then he tells, oh, and yeah. they make agreements. Like you're gonna meet he, he her a, in the in the hotel lied, bar. He lied to a dominatrix. Did he tell the story on the, sh- on the show? I don't think. Yeah, he did. He did. I don't. You know, that's yeah. like the dishonesty thing. But but I'm talking about like the. I'm talking about like the role playing thing where it's like you can agree in advance and you can go like like he he did this thing in New York where. He had one person that he knew from from one part of the world and another person, and they were one was a dom and one was a sub, and he told them like like he was explaining to me over drinks. He's like, "Here's what I did. I told them I gave him my hotel room uh, keys, and I told them you're gonna I'm gonna go to this Adult Swim thing. You guys are gonna meet in my hotel room. They've never met before. You guys powwow about whatever you want to do to me when I get back to the room. I don't know. I don't know wh- how you're gonna interact with each other or what you're gonna do. Dino is just like gonna go have dinner, <laughs> hang out, and then while I went to the upfronts and learned about marketing and demographics uh, uh, and watched a Miley Cyrus uh, performance, Dino went back to his hotel room where two women, you know, uh, d- d- had agreed to do secret things to, to 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 his body that were like he didn't know if he was gonna, when he was gonna walk in there if he was going to be attacked and told that he was a pig and tied up and blah, blah, blah. Or if he was going to walk in and one woman was going to have the other woman woven in a web and hanging from like in a uh, Lord of the Rings cocoon, you know, like, and go like, like, like she's in there, but like, like, I, 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 like he didn't know. And so, and then I, and I never, I never asked him because I didn't really, that, that stuff I was fascinated with, like the preparatory period. And then yeah. the next day I saw him and it was like, how'd it go? And he was like, it was great. Like, but he knew going into it that it could have been a disaster. Yeah. That's the other weird thing is like the acceptance of like, like part of our mythology of sex is like, oh, it's supposed to always be good. Like, like it's like dessert when like like actually it's like an intermingling of the human like, like animal you know and like i it, it's like that 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 idea that certs commercial idea that romance equals sex equals always infatuated equals all that stuff that that could be 
responsible for a very high divorce rate because you look across the table at breakfast at this person that you haven't felt animalistic about in 10 years and why should you out of respect to her feel that way and now all of a sudden because you saw a stupid rom-com the other night you think that means you're not in love with her which isn't true you know there just might need to be communication about what makes your little wee wee uh <laughs> Dance around and what and, and 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 maybe like what dance terrifies around. it? What makes your little wee wee dance around? And, and maybe what scares you? What what, what what you think might be a train what makes wreck. your little wee wee dance around? <laughs> what kind of and music what, makes yes, your wee wee yes, dance? And around? what sort of dance is it? Is it a foxtrot or a merengue? My final thesis Cumbia. is those guys are. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of douchebags among those people, but I, I perceive them as existing on a slightly higher, more evolved level because I think that if we're all going to survive. In a world where our kids are able to like look at the internet and like, how do people raise children? I've, uh, I, I, like, 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 we're becoming like that this myth that like, well, when a man likes a lady, they go in the bedroom and then they she takes off her clothes and he loves what he sees and he drops his pants and she's like, wow, and <laughs> and then she going, lays back and then he goes in there and he's just like root toot toot toot. <laughs> And they both love it, and like, well, you know, we, we used to think she didn't have to love it, but now we know, as of the 70s, if she loves it, it increases the chance of conception. Um, uh, because her cum will glide his right into the egg, and that's how sex... It, it, it's like, it doesn't... Like we're st- the, pe- the people who are talking about, like, like you know, you should, you, should, you should dress like a leprechaun, man. I want you to dress like a leprechaun. And I don't, I don't want to know when you're coming for my gold. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep gold in my kitchen, and I'm a, and and wear pants with a with the dick cut out, and like, but take three days, surprise, shock me, scare the shit out of me, and be like, where's me gold? And like, and then fucking get on me and just like, fucking like, make my limp dick hard, like, I'll, cause I'll be like, ah, it's a leprechaun, and like, make it hard, make it hard, unless I say tequila. Let's be honest. How many how many little wee wee's are dancing around right now? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, good, uh, one, a couple of polite shows of hands there. I'm like, I, I knew a girl that uh, she, her, her her job she gets paid quite a quite a good deal of money. There's this billionaire that she works for. Apparently, is quite good looking and very successful and a nice guy and seems well adjusted. But I, her job is to humiliate him on like kind of grand grand scale, and like she's also supposed to like fuck him in the butt with a with a big uh, strap on and stuff at the end of the whole shebang. But before that happens, she's supposed to do high concept humiliation, and so one of the ones that she did, he's like, and like, here's a blank check, like, like, Scott. like, 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 like re- remake Star Wars, <laughs> and put my name on it. <laughs> Eighty-five million dollars. This is a, this is terrible. She's like, I don't know. I thought if the robots were rounder, I don't know. <laughs> oh no! Boing. <laughs> now fuck me in the butt. Quick, fuck me in the butt. Uh, high fuck concept me in the butt. humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, that was a goodie. Thanks so much. <laughs> what a what uh, an orgasm. Uh, back to work tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, her, one of the ones she did. Uh, he got off a plane and she had like a team of people. There's this cast of people and he doesn't know what it is. And he gets off the plane, and there was like a, a car waiting for him, and it's a his, his publicist is there, which is all fake. He's greeted by his publicist, his agent, and he's going like he's going to a high fashion photo shoot, and uh, he goes to uh, this office building, and he's told that he has to go to a, he, he's a, he's a supermodel, and this guy is not a supermodel, and waiting in the waiting room are the best looking men in the world. <laughs> Like, like, like super good looking guys and they're all going in there and he has to watch them do what he's about to do and uh, so he has to get naked but then they dress him up like a little like, I forget what the costumes were but all, everybody there the, like everyone he met that day all had to watch him do something and the whole thing was just completely to like diminish him and to make him feel horrified and like take his clothes off and dance around like, like dress up as a little boop I don't know what the fuck it was <laughs> But like she's like the hard part is like you gotta keep coming up with these fucking ideas. <laughs> <laughs> these the easy, the easy parts fucking him in the butt there the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, nice work if you can get it. You can get it if you try. 
I would never want that job. Like, that would be terrible. Yeah, but I admire. I, I think that's great. Like, I because obviously the people who do it successfully and get paid to do it, they're they're. The, it's like we we live in a world where you can't make a lawn toy without you know consumer advocacy oversight <laughs> like 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 and like we don't have a lot of fatalities and emotional casualties of like the sex service industry and and we know that it's a big industry and so what we know is that even though it's mostly unregulated like there's a lot of very responsible independent agents out there that through Nothing but their primal understanding of. Uh, <laughs> this is part of a fantasy I paid Jeff to help me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, mm, it's supposed to be my show. Uh, stop dancing. Stop making. He's oh. dancing. Is dancing. <laughs> if if I'm going like this, and you go like that, yeah. Well, no, I know what happens. I'm explaining to them. Your little wee wee dances around. The first syllable in dancing is Dan. <laughs> Tomorrow, you've been quiet. I have been quiet. I have a, I, I, one thing you can touch on is like the people who, because in my experience with it. Um, I have a lot of friends who uh, go into cross that line into that, but they they don't they don't know that until it happens. It sort of happens accidentally to them, and then they have these stories and they tell you, yeah, uh, that they didn't know that they had that part. Of it. I had a friend who was a writer, a um, uh, very accomplished writer, who went to a party once in Boston, I think, in a like a, a weird sort of loft party in Boston, and was milling about with talking to people and wandered around to look at the place. And walked into a room. Uh, all four walls of the room had murals of Lucille Ball painted on them. And then the door shut behind him. And there was, was a woman in there who was, I think it was her place. And she was uh, a, a, a dominatrix. And she said, who asked you to come into this room? And then she said, who told you to come in this room? And he said, no, uh, nobody. And then she... Uh, put him in a rack, pulled a rack down from the ceiling and put him in. And he's telling me this story and I'm listening. He gets into this rack, she straps him up in this thing and there's no suspension in the middle so he's sort of, his body is, is held but the middle of his body is drawn down and it's discomforting. And she raises him up to the ceiling so that he can see all four murals basically at the same time and there's all this pressure and she walks out of the room, shuts the door, locks it and leaves. Uh, she doesn't let him out until the morning, and he comes down, and he's telling, so this happened on like a Friday or Saturday, this is Thursday when he's telling me this, and I was like, you realize at every point of that, you had to, you could have outgunned her and walked around, gotten out of the room, you got into the rack, and he just goes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and, it, uh, and there are other examples. Of it. There's friends of mine who've just said, "You're not going to believe what happened to me Thursday," and then they tell the story. And it's just, you know, it's, you know, these things. Uh, sometimes people don't know, um, and then they and they just have it in them. I think it, it just is in them, and they don't maybe go to it regularly. I think that's true it, because I I will lay myself bare as much as I can here and say, like I've never I've never done anything like that. However, at 42, what I have done is gone through a bunch of relationships where I was very much in charge and then a couple where things got a little sketchy and a little hurt, a little hurtful where I got abraded a little bit. And uh, I like I I don't I don't know if this makes me scarred or healthy or or is it's like is this what I was always into because you always hear people talking about like 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 Dino says, like it's not about the it's not about a, like a hard on of the moment. It's not like it's not a, it's like it's like a whole this is whole experience, and then you jerk off to it later. Like it's to, to 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 quote Dino about this stuff. Like, yeah, it's it, like, it, yeah, like Dino's whole thing is like, like, like do you do you do you get off? And he's like, oh no, never. It's like like it's all for for jerking off for the rest of your life thinking about that. Right, and so and so then I think, okay, you jerk off for the rest of your life thinking about that, and then I think. Well, what have I jerked off to the rest of my life thinking about? And some of those things have been very 
emotionally painful. Like I, beca- and I don't know if that's like distance. You know, pornography can be very, can be very misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs> name Every one once in a while. Name one. Uh, male pornographers don't take the ladies' feelings into account. <laughs> Um, there are there are there are lots of uh, self 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 employed female pornographers out there who are the heroes of the new inter- information age because they're the first people to monetize the internet and they're millionaires and they're, they're they they don't have pimps and they're not they don't exist in a world where they're ruled and they're they're doing what they they like but pornography's history does have a lot <laughs> a trace of misogyny to it and um, and I and I wonder how much of that has to do with the fact that men are like these brutes who like we exert all this control f- based on like this instinctive fear and need and then it's like getting hurt getting getting like getting victimized getting taken advantage of you know is that like I wait, don't wait, know are you, I'm sorry are you saying that there, I'm say, there, I'm saying there like, are memories that you have that, that were sexual memories but that were still hurtful is, I don't, were, were I'm you, saying no 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 I'm saying that I have I have in the past like throughout my life I've seen a pattern and I, I, I like, like where I like, I will masturbate thinking about ex girlfriends that I do not like, that like like you know, cheating on me. That's what I'm saying. Like 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 like, like a cuckold like 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 thing. Like like, I, but I know from my life experience that I don't like that. I don't want that to happen to me. But then, so I don't know if when I'm like it. it Am I exhibiting a uh, need during masturbation to distance myself from what I'm thinking about so that it can be animalistic appropriately? That's how I've always parsed it. It's like when you're masturbating, you don't want it to be – you don't want to think about the royal wedding. <laughs> I, I hope. I, I hope, in spite of her lowborn upbringing, that Princess Di is happy in this marriage, and I, I hope he really makes love to her tonight. I, I you, 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 you think about people being animals. You know, you think about the taboo, and uh, and so I don't know if that's just like a personal expression of that, where you're just like, like, well, look, I want to. This is this is about self indulgence, and this is about like like part of that trigger is like this is that, things I'm not supposed to be thinking about. Things what if, I'm not what if your ex-girlfriend was cheating on you with uh, Prince Charles? <laughs> she is. <laughs> what is this, the 80s? And you're not supposed to say it. We're all going to die tonight. But courtesy of uh, Her Majesty's somewhat uh, uh, untrained but still very effectual Secret Service. Uh, sorry, what were you going to say, DeMarge? No, I just, I mean, uh, that kind of sexuality is targeted, I think, when you're when you're thinking that way. And it's... Um, psychologically, it based if you subscribe to that, but also neurologically, it's limbic, and uh, that's and that system kind of acts on its own. It sort of bridges that gap between uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, and so you can do targeted thinking. You can find, and it, and it actually does, I think, isolate the things that you're concerned, the narrative aspects of it. it like, kind of pushes them out. It edits them yeah. out. And it just sort of is the node. It's those things that trigger those dendrites and make those things make all those things move. I just like them big old titties. <laughs> <laughs> what if you had seventeen of them? Brought to you <laughs> by Frito Lay. Brings it all around. That's not no. That's not how the show ends. You can't force it to end. No, you don't get to pick the ending of the show. I know you have school tomorrow. We we don't end before ten ever. <laughs> Even totally going to end the could show. Say, yeah, you could say. <laughs> I hate it. I don't want to end the show. <laughs> I don't. Uh, do, do, uh, do, are we bringing? Anybody, is it just us tonight? I want to bring. I want to bring out uh, as a Spencer replacement, uh, but not. He's not going to guide us through D and D unless he wants to. Uh, is uh, coming back? But he probably won't. My other assistant, Steve Levy. <laughs> what up, Steve? You can choose if you sit there or sit in the Spencer seat. I don't want- Hello. My, my favorite thing about Steve is he's the opposite of Spencer. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. You're very clean shaven and oh, okay. uh, very n- nervous. Um, <laughs> not that Spencer's not nervous, but I mean you and you care about me. I, you, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah. Spencer does... A, as well. Spencer does not care about me. So, 
if if I if Spencer and I were somehow locked alone in a home and uh, I died, like like the dog would eat my face first, the cat third, Spencer second. I don't know about that. He's a. I'm just. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't. He, he. But I'm saying you're a compassionate. What is the division of labor while? between these two assistants? Like, what, I will tell you. So, does one hunt and one gather? <laughs> <laughs> so I used to. I used to have Daniela, who then uh, she got pregnant. She raised her kid in the in the office, and like, like I mean, she she. I did my best to be a, a part of this modern workplace where like we don't provide women with any kind of like acknowledgement that that uh, maternity is part is part of uh health care blah 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 points 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 ladies thank you um <laughs> Uh, the, the the but but I I mean so I was you know there's a crib next to my desk and like I I I, I didn't change the diapers but I took a lot of Instagrams of the baby, uh, <laughs> everything a modern boss should do but even <laughs> still like, <laughs> a, a, after a while, making like, making your employee bring the baby to work not not maternity leave no she had maternity leave oh. how dare you oh, okay no, not, like, like, like that's 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 not enough like, like, oh, like, when like, the baby like, was of a certain age the, the, it's child care I mean yeah, yeah. once you have a baby the child needs care. We tell we tell parents that they both have to work, and then we t- but we also simultaneously tell them like, oh yeah, the, you should definitely have kids. Like, it, it it it's and then when a mother has a baby, it's like we act like they got the flu. We're like we're like oh okay, so go home for a while and come back when you're better, which means you can hire a nanny. Uh, it, it's and if you can't afford that, i.e., you're 99 percent of everybody, then you're like, what are you doing? And so in in our case, the baby was like in a drawer, and I. <laughs> Their faces are so smooth at that point, like they make really great mouse pads for the for the laser tracking ones, not the old ball ones because they get they're like pugs. They have accumulated. Right. This is wasn't why I wanted to bring this up. Right. Daniela eventually had to leave by virtue of the call. It's like she was like, you know, I feel like I'm being a bad assistant and a bad mother, and obviously I'm going to choose. To be a good mother, so so she Spencer filled that first hole, right? Well, sometime along when when Spencer filled the first hole, uh, <laughs> and you never forget that. While she was, it was a claw while, hammer. While by the she way. was, well, when she when she got pregnant, I started to feel guilty about making her go to Toys R Us to buy video games. <laughs> It's like, like, you answer the phones, like, 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 do appointments and all this stuff. You're the clerical assistant. Like, you know, that's what you do. Appointments, count. This, is a big, this is a big job. Like, like full-time job for old popular man, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Lots of people yeah. want to interview me. And, and it's get, true. Yeah, vanity fair, I'm sure, or something. <laughs> so at that point, brought Spencer on, because Spencer was in the back room of the Apple store and thought, Okay, so Spencer's going to schlep. He's going to be like a B assistant. If I need to go, if I need video games, he'll go get them. If I need like a headphone, you know, he'll schlep. If, if you need an I Harmon uh, fashion, he'll, he'll do that for you. He'll like, he'll, yeah, he'll like, he'll, ta- he'll till, uh, fill the bar at home or like, you know, like, like the, the, the schleppy personal assistant stuff and then the business assistant. That's the division. I, I, yeah, I, I guess that's, that's sort of how it is. But I, Spencer does a lot more. I, he, he's been helping me a lot of, in a lot of ways. Oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> well, all he does is go to Toys R Us. No, I, I, I'm not, I, I wasn't. I didn't. Mean, I, it sounds like I, I thought it sounded like both of you do a lot. I, uh, I wouldn't want to schlep or fucking handle it. I was just explaining, to Jeff. Boy, I'm getting drunk. So <laughs> when, da- when Daniela dum, 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 Daniela dum, left, dum, dum. and she helped me find. Like she, her last act as one of the greatest assistants in the world. She took her baby out of the drawer. Was to, <laughs> we find, yes. She, I, so I, I, I said your 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 baby and your gun, and she put them on the table. <laughs> uh, I took them. I don't you know why a, I took. You, you took the baby? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I guess it's just part of like she's on suspension. I yeah. guess, but now you know, if, if I catch her pursuing this you, case, you're getting you're getting too close to this baby. <laughs> I want you to have this baby. Um, but so, and then so, and then we I interviewed a bunch of uh, uh, candidates and one of them was was Steve, and that's that's Steve's role. He's the new Daniela, whereas Spencer is like just like kind of like uh, he's like uh, he's a, he's like a, a sh- he's a chauffeur. He has to drive me everywhere because I still don't have a car. That's Spencer. And then uh, yes, good. 
Does he provide any bodyguard service? He's a big, he's a big fella. He's got that wolf, that wolf kick defense thing. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Spencer your ads against think, nature. I think if you get, got attacked by any group of anything, be they thugs or, or, or wolves or anything, I think Spencer might just like, tap into some weird reservoir of rage and really fucking <laughs> hurt people. I'm sure, yeah, I think between me and Spencer... You know, like if a very, very small, unarmed uh, preteen girl. You're kind of like uh, Rodney Dangerfield, and I forget the actor's name, uh, Lou. Burt Bur- Bur- Young. Burt Young yeah, in yeah, uh, yeah. Back to School. <laughs> All right, anyway, so Steve, so so I just, I, Spencer's not here, so I, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd bring you up and we'd, we'd get to know you. And That sounds hey, good. Sorry, I'm here. getting texts. Uh, Steve, what, what's the uh, name? Name some of the. What's the most satisfying element of uh, of, of being a Harmon assistant? Oh, so Aaron's actually also. I, I maybe my. I, I thought it was obvious that I don't. I value Spencer a lot. So I don't, it's Aaron's like warning me that it sounds like I don't think Spencer does anything. I, I would say. I would say I would say to balance things out a little bit, say something nice about Spencer. You, 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 I mean, the guy who couldn't bother to be here. He's amazing. That's not fair. The uh, th- thing is, the and the next th- time he's here, I'm gonna crush him. <laughs> Ooh, and I'll tell you one more thing, yeah. Gene. Uh, <laughs> no, I. Uh, wait, 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 uh, Spencer, if you're out there, and, and I hope you are, uh, the show is called Harmon Town. But no matter like, when Greg Proops came on, or Ryan Styles, or somebody, somebody made a, a dig on Spencer. Fucking sacred territory. Oh baby. man, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't uh, fuck uh, with that, Spencer. That, you, that, why do you think I hate him? No, no, no. I'm kidding. It's, uh, he's my son. What do you want me to say? He's my son. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Tell him you love him. <laughs> Tell your son you love him. I don't know what love is. <laughs> the, I have hired him to help me find you're, out. You're, you're being a... <laughs> he does a very good job. He's, he's You're being the great Dantini right now. You're, you're being a, you're being a, so, a harsh I, I, it's father. My, it's my instinct. That I feel... I, start, I, I just... I, what? I, like, T- why, why is it... What, what, what do you I, like about him? <laughs> Name a couple things that you like about him and then they're valuable to you. The same thing as them, his beard and he's funny. You know, it's a flannel shirt and it's like May, do you, do you, you know. Do you consider do you consider him a friend, a pal, a coffee? Yeah, dog? definitely, yeah. yeah. I only have like three friends. <laughs> you know, like yeah. If, if if you and Dino like stop hanging out with me, I'd be like, hey, uh, Dana Gould? <laughs> And he'd be like, hey, Dan, what's going on? I'd be like, yeah, I remember 1995 when we said we'd hang out. <laughs> so, yes, Spencer's my friend. But I guess I, uh, I, guess I undersold that. It's, I'm not going to pressure you because you, you, you were having a difficult time expressing... Uh, isn't, uh, isn't that the highest a, compliment? Affection. No, it's not. The highest compliment is an actual high compliment. <laughs> He's uh, what he's 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 my I, I I see myself in him and I I respect him and uh, even that's not a good enough compliment because you know no, what, that's not, good, those are good compliments. He's right? not like a mini me or anything like that. Like he's like I just like you know I, I I like him and I feel I feel very comfortable with him. That's the thing when he comes and picks me up. Like I've talked about that before. Like I don't have like he and I are in the same wavelength or lack of it. So like, like 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 other other people like there's always that inevitable point where it's like. Uh, I'm fine with the fact that I haven't said that you're doing a good job for the last four weeks, but are you, you know, and I, I warned you about that when I interviewed you. It's I true. think that drives yeah. a lot and of the, people in, in screaming person, out of the building. Yeah. Um, but is, Spencer's one of the most charming, genuine, moral people I think I've ever met, and that's just part of the allure. Yeah. Well, yeah. like, for example, so... Here, here. So this might really embarrass uh, Marissa. I hope it doesn't. But but uh, she, when she was she was visiting, she was she was here for all this while. She was getting her she was doing her post productive thing. Who's, um, who's Marissa? Marissa was a, is she she's the first person to ever do a blog about us. She was like she was the she's the number one absolute. Of like, course, yeah, yeah. Beyond community fan, she's like a she's like a she was like a Dan Harmon fan before that was a thing, and like. Uh, and is a delightful young lady, and uh, 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 like like really like 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 smart and cool and balanced, and um, it, and and she she came to our wedding, and like I mean she's she's like a friend, she's not like uh, uh, she's more than a fan, she's like a friend, and she 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 was in L.A. like getting her degree in uh, post production, and I, I brought her over to uh, a community, and we were hanging out, we we're doing all this stuff, and like 
we're all like, let's go, let's go out and get a drink and all this stuff. And Marissa's like, I gotta pack up my shit. And I got my, my truck full of shit and all this stuff. Blah blah blah. And she like Marissa's coming to meet us at this restaurant to to have a drink. And she gets she was moving this, that day. All of her stuff was packed in her car. She gets in this terrible. Well, not terrible, but like 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 I mean, all it, it, it was a scary. She gets accident, in a car yeah. accident. <laughs> like it was. Uh, and um, she's freaking out because she's young and like 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 every anyone freaks out when they get in a car accident. But you're first one and you're out of town and your shit's in the back seat and like you you don't you're just you. She was like she was really freaking out. And Spencer and Steve ran over there and like Steve, I, I didn't fucking go. I was like, <laughs> she was like a block from the restaurant and I was like, Steve Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're like your angels to your Charlie. Tell her, tell her, I'll, uh, I'll cover, I'll cover the insurance bill or whatever. You know, like I'll, I'll like throw money at shit, but I'm not like I, I, I don't have a heart. I'm a horrible, heartless villain. And, and it's not true. And these guys ran over. Uh, I thank you. I'll, uh, you get a bonus for that saying that. <laughs> the, the, but. But anyways, but that, just talking about like Spencer's like Spencer puts his money where his mouth is in terms of a personality because like he Steve's account of it, it was like not only did Spencer go over there and help out, but actually like at, at, at every at every accident scene, there's like a very a little flaw in our justice system where it's like two people collide. No one knows who fault it is. Like two civil servants show up. And that, it's traumatic. Yeah. So two people are traumatized. Like, and two guys with badges and guns show up and they basically are judge jury. Like that's that, it basically ends with them. Like they have to get out of the car and like make their decision. Spencer was so like, they were so taken with Spencer that he, he's, he's so, he was so warm and like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was pre- I'm pretty sure like, like we, like, we like, all have he, our qualities. Like, like they're kind of our lead qualities. Um, and also, I think that we're all good people, but I don't, I don't, I don't know very many people. Thank you. Uh, I don't know very many people that, that the lead quality that I would say about them. There's, I, know, I know some, but uh, Spencer is one of the few people I know that I would, the first quality I say he's good. Spencer is a good person, and and, and like, like not that not that we're not good people, but he leads with good, and he's and you you said it, Steve, that he's a moral person. I think that. He has an intense moral compass, which I think is very yeah. Valuable. He wants to do the right thing, and he thinks about that a lot. He doesn't want to do the popular thing. He doesn't want to even do the thing. I think I fall short of that. Where I'm like, what do most people think is the right thing? <laughs> I want to do that yeah. if they're looking. Spencer doesn't hesitate. Spencer knows what, Sp- what's Spencer, the right thing. To Spencer do. is like, like like he doesn't give to panhandlers, but does jump out of his car to give to the people that are going through recycling bins, getting shit even though they might tell him to go fuck himself because they didn't ask for anything, but he's giving them money because he's, he's, you know, he's like puzzling through in his head. Like, how do you actually use your pocket change to like help society? Actually, that sounds kind of draconian and like Ann Randish, but, but, (laughs) but, but, but I mean, he thinks about morality. He thinks about being a good person and he, and he also like, like, yeah, he, he like, I could picture him like, I would, I would fucking like, that's why I didn't go over there. I'm like, there's going to be hysterical people getting out of cars, pointing at each other and shrieking, this is your fault, no, it's your fault. And there's going to be two douchebag cops who, who like, don't don't know what to do, but they're going to file their little report, and all this shit's going to be handled by insurance companies, and I don't want anything to do with this shit. Just tell me who to write the check out to, and I don't fucking care. Spencer went over there with his little cargo shorts and his flannel shirt. That's <laughs> probably the reason why the cops were basically like, yeah, it was probably the other lady's fault, because... <laughs> Because she was screaming bloody murder, and Marissa was like traumatized and freaking out, having this lady like shrieking at her. Well, not at her, but like about her uh, to the cops. And and like, but Spencer was just like, I don't. Well, you were there. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, first thing I saw was you know, Marissa was noticeably upset, and her car was totaled, like it was destroyed. Um, and Spencer, like the first thing he did, he walked over and he gave her this uh, big hug, and he was like, "It's gonna be okay, um, oh, you know. Like yeah. we're gonna, we're, whatever, <laughs> whatever happens, like you know, you're you're healthy, and you know, it's a vehicle, it's a, you know, it's aluminum. I don't know what is it, Alumi- Alumi- aluminium, uh, steel, aluminium. Alu- yeah. <laughs> um, he's like, you know, you're, everything's gonna be okay, and she, you know, she just had all these. Things going through her head, like you know, how am I going to pay for all this? How, I got to get a new car. Like, it's all these. Me, things. that's and the answer. I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's and my morality. And Spencer's Spencer's like, 
we'll, we'll one thing at a time, you know, like let's let's get through this whole process with the police. And I know this woman's like an insane person right now, and wow. she won't even talk to you. She wasn't, she wouldn't even look at Marissa's face. Like Marissa would say, like I'm, you know, I'm sorry, uh, I'm trying to like talk to this woman so they can like come to some kind of an agreement, but she wouldn't even talk to her. It was really terrible. Um, but Spencer was there through the whole thing, and the cops showed up and. I, if, I, if I ever got in a car accident, I would want somebody who's good at logic and maps to go, well, there's no way the car could have gone there because the car cars only <laughs> well, moved at this rate per second. Like, so, like he, But Spencer was like that. So he, he examined – before the cops even got there, he examined the damage of Marissa's car and the woman's oh, car. Of course he did. And, and, he, he, and, and he was like, okay, Marissa, like, 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 take me through it. Like, what, what happened? You know, and so she was like, you know, this guy, uh, I was in the leftmost lane, and the guy, uh, it was, we were at a red light, and the guy waved me on because I had my blinker on to turn, to get into the next lane, and she, so this guy was stopped, and, and Marissa went into the next lane, he, you know, he held up traffic for her to move on, and her car, I guess, like, she, you know, she looked, and she set another blinker to move into the, to the rightmost lane, um, and this car just whizzed up and just nailed her. And uh, so Sp- Spencer looked at the damage, and he goes, she was definitely speeding or texting. Like, <laughs> y- you know, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, uh, so, uh, you know. S- it, Spencer, CSI. It, yeah, it, 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 it's the kind of thing she was like, you know, I shouldn't have cut across two lanes, but Spencer's like, but for the amount of damage that happened here, she was doing something Illicit, like yeah. there's something wrong. And then, then the cops came, and they, Marissa was totally honest with them. You know, I cut across three, la- like two lanes or whatever it was, and they're, and they're like, yeah, you should, you shouldn't do, do that. But at the same time, they were like, ma'am, were you looking at your phone? Were were you texting? No, I was texting. You know, like uh, she's from Miami. It was legal there until last year. You could like look at your phone or like oh, wow. text on your phone. It's a crazy place. <laughs> Don't go to Miami. <laughs> Well, Levy, but, but all right. So aside from noticing how awesome Spencer is, yeah. your your uh, your your talents include helping me edit like the last half of uh, season six of Community because I was fucking checked out. This guy's awesome. He doesn't have anybody here to to, to say what about Steve Levy. That's why I wanted to bring him up. <laughs> yeah, Thank fuck you. Spencer. That's what you're saying. Oh, wait. Uh, so. so s- so, it's not Dan, I, th- I think you told me that there were times when you were like, uh, like I- I'm, I'm tired, and you, you, you let Steve take the wheel. Like you, he took the helm sometimes. I, I, absolutely. Well, I don't want him to get blamed if season six, season six sucks. I, 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 I or, or get in trouble with a guild or a union or something. <laughs> no, no. But I'm saying, like, like I'm saying, there were times when I would have phoned it in, and I, like, 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 like Steve had that enthusiasm, which is also like Chris McKenna before him and Ruthie Aslan, the editor. Like I. I am I am at the mercy of people who, at the moment of my exhaustion and the p- point where I'm reading the 700th tweet that's like, bu- you know, pushing me, like out the door, where I'm just like, I don't, you know, who cares? It's funny enough, it's good enough, and then there's always so- there's someone else that goes like, yeah, but what if you did this and like like uh, like R- Ruthie and Steve and. Um, uh, and, 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 and I mean, just in the edit bay, like, like there at the end, um, and our other editors in case they're listening, JP and JP. Billy, uh, and also, uh, the hairdresser, uh, she, I, but, 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 I, but, you know, it was awesome to have somebody cause you, I'm never going to say to somebody, come to the edit bay with me. You said, Hey, I'm interested in that. Okay, good. Come in here. And then you were like, what if you did that? instead and there's like by the way i have never said this to you now that we're done there's a lot of hazing that happens when that when when you do that like like the editors out of protection for the whole thing like they weren't they weren't too coy about like Uh, oh no if you if you had been capable of being shamed into silence they would have found that well i at first i was i was terrified of saying anything but there were like a couple bits in, in grifter where you're like, I really want it to work this way, but I, I don't know. I, like, I, I can't. I can't think. Of, I don't like right now in this moment. I, I don't know how to make it work. And then I was like, What if we? What if you did that? And then yeah. Uh, yeah did you like Hugh, Hugh Jackman take your shirt off and like start editing with both hands? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not not quite. I love both my children. That's diminishing. <laughs> they're both they're both adult males, Dan. 
Yeah, and I'm really old and about to die. I should have adult males for children. Uh, are you com- are you comfortable, Steve, in the role of Dan's son? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. No. Steve, Steve what, what, sounds what, what, like a. What's your what's your what's your goal? Like, like what are you aiming towards? Do you have? You seem like you're probably an, an ambitious fellow in your in your own way. I, I guess like producing or directing. Television, uh, film, TV for now. I guess yeah. Great. Yeah. So far, so good. It's it's been an, uh, an amazing process, and uh, Dan's a, a phenomenal boss. For all the haters out why. there, fuck you. You're wrong. <laughs> uh, wh- uh, wh- what do you mean? There's haters. I, 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 well, okay, so so. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but like when people uh, when people ask me like lay it, oh, on, l- lay it on him, Steve. This no, is the, this no. is the forum. This is the forum for this. Uh, no, I, he needs to hear it. Is it better to come from you? No, I'm saying he needs to hear it from his own son. <laughs> I'm not going to the dark side, Dad. No, I. Dan's, Dan's amazing. He, uh, I, I, people ask me, like, what do you do? I'm, a, I, I'm an assistant. Oh, yeah, everyone's an assistant. Who are you assisting? Dan Harmon. And then it's like, oh, what's that like? You know, it's like, why does it have that negative connotation? This is the best job I've ever had, you know? And I, I worked, like, on a lot of jobs in this town, in the industry. And uh, I, You say that until you have one night, you're on a sawhorse with a hammer up your ass. <laughs> Cliffhanger! Be broke no more. Now that's an ending. <laughs> Steve Levy, everybody. Welcome to the family, Steve. Pleasure to have you here. Thank we'll you. learn more about him as the, as the time goes by. That's a nice little introduction. Demorge Brown. Spencer Critton's not here, but his ghost is. James Adomian as Senator Bernie Sanders. <laughs> everybody here at Meltdown, Dustin Marshall, producer, Zach, everybody. I'm Jeff Davis, or come totally. Your, your mayor is Dan Harmon, everybody. Chris on the cameras back there. We got, wait, what? Yep. Did you mention him? All right. Let's go crush some bros. Let's go crush some bros. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.